Hello, Roger Cuthbert here. Welcome to the Halstead and District Photographic Society's In Isolation competition, week 12. The theme this week is floral design. This is the last round of our In Isolation competition and we've had a great mix of images, winners and judges to while away the days over the last three months while for most of us we've been staying at home. As the lockdown eases, we're moving away from the weekly isolation competitions and we will have some three weekly summer competitions for you all to enter. Anyway, enough from me. Our judge for the final week is our trusty regular at the Five Bells Top Dog competition, Brian Fleming. Let's see what happens this week. Over to you, Brian. Floral design. Sorry, you've got me again for this round. I can only say if you want to hear less of me, then put your name forward for a round. You could even pick the subject, food for thought. Again, you've not disappointed and a great set of images are coming your way with some very creative takes on the theme. As usual, these are my own opinions and you are free to disagree with my final choices and comments. Photography, after all, is subjective. Jug of flowers. A very well laid out image. Great composition, well exposed and pin sharp. The author has handled highlights well and the shape of the flowers flowing from the jug to the bottom right of the image really works well. I like the pastel colours of the blooms and the crop is just right. A very pleasant image to start this round off with. Aquilegia. Very delicate lighting on this image which suits the delicate form of the flower. Your eye is led in from the lighter tones on the right and you are taken through the image to the darker tones on the left where you gently fade out of the image. Well exposed and pin sharp where it needs to be. I like the use of the dark background which focuses the attention on the flower and the very delicate key line holds the image in. A splash of colour or is it a dog? A very creative image possibly created using a leftover image from the last round. And why not? It certainly created a splash in this round. I like the vibrant colours of the splash and the blooms, but I do find the whole image busy and my eye keeps going to the splash, which is not the point of the theme. Well handled, well exposed and vibrant. Key line possibly a little heavy. A clever image, but as I say, a little busy. Box of Delights Box of Delights Another very delicate simple image using just the three blooms on a complementary background. I like the use of the wooden box which gives some darker tones to the image and the delicate petals are deliberately placed round the bloom that is not in the box. Again well exposed and sharp but with a gentle feel to the image. Bring me sunshine Possibly a creative use of poster edges filter, but well suited to the interpretation the author has chosen to present. I love the colour combinations and the background is very complementary to the image and it has a very fluid feel. The blooms have been well handled and stand out from the background. I would have considered cloning out the odd leaf on the right dropping down as it perhaps leads to an imbalance in the image. That said, still a creative image. Cistus in ice. An abstract image as we have no sense of scale within the presented crop. I'm not familiar with the flower so I don't know what part we are looking at. Looking at it as a complete abstract I find the colours pleasing and as we are told it is in ice we can see the reflection of the bloom in the bottom half of the image or are we looking at ice crystals? I'm really not sure about this. I will have to ask the author after the round is finished. Whatever I find it a pleasing abstract of a flower bloom. Dahlia. Beautifully sharp, well lit and exposed image of this dahlia with a vase. I say with a vase instead of a vase as the bloom looks too big to be in it. However, this does not distract from the beauty of this image as the colours of the vase, whether natural or coloured with gels, really complement the bloom, making the whole look like one entity. It's as if the vase was a continuation of the dahlia. Dark background suits the subject and the key line finishes it off. 
Dandelions. Dandelions. A very Van Gothish representation presented to us here, and I love it. Dandelions. A very Van Gothish representation presented to us here, and I love it. The colours are complementing each other, and the back cloth gives it an impressionistic feel. Dandelions. A very Van Gothish representation presented to us here, and I love it. The colours are complementing each other, and the back cloth gives us an impressionistic feel, more especially as it recedes away from the vase. The blooms and vase are sharp, and the whole is well exposed and lit. What's not to like? Falling petal. I'm really sorry, as I know I have said it a lot, but I can't help saying it again here, as this is yet another well exposed and well lit image, and catches a moment in time. Whether you caught the petal falling naturally, or dropped it from out of frame, you have captured it perfectly. The base of the pot is a tiny bit dark, but it is saved by the rim light on the saucer, and the blue picked up in this light gives depth to the pot. The dark background works well, throwing all the focus on the plant, and the key line holds it together. A very pleasing image. Floral design Chinese style. A pleasantly receding image of a formal flower garden. It's a little flat in terms of light, but you may have only been there on that one day and at that one time, so you have to go with what you are given. The point of view you have chosen gives us a lot of paved area on the bottom left of the image, which does not add much to the image. Floral Shadow A very creative image. A lot of thought has gone into the making of this image, and the overall crop shape suits the subject. I like the way the various elements are in their own frames. For example, the seed head in the top black third, the seed head shadow and blue bottleneck in the middle white third, and just some blank negative space at the bottom to anchor it all in. Just two colours in this image, the warm yellow-orange tones of the seed head and the striking blue of the bottle. It would have been nice to see a small key line in perhaps the same colour blue as the bottle to hold it all in. Stunning image. Flowers in a jam jar. A pretty floral arrangement in an old fashioned jam jar. I like the crop, however just a sliver more off the right hand side would have taken the white off the window frame, just showing on the edge of the frame. Background muted and unobtrusive. Flowers vibrant and backlit with window light, with a hint of reflected light back into the front of the image. Box glove design, another abstract image, and rather a nice one. Would we know they were fox gloves if not told? I suspect not. But the lighting, colour and composition are stunning. The image has a vibrancy and transparency that really suits the subject. I love the shades of blue in the main element of the image and the way the green tones seem to encircle them. Blue key line is essential, but perhaps a little large. Still a stunning image. Garden bells. A nice crop just concentrating the eye on the main subject and nice backlighting to the flowers themselves. The background and the top is spot on, but I find it a bit distracting at the bottom for it being somewhat brighter. Nature has provided a good colour combination which the author has exploited. Geum under ice. Stunning abstract. This really does give the sense of a bloom being frozen in time, just waiting for the thaw to burst out into its full glory. I love the way the vibrant reds and oranges are concentrated in the bottom right fading away through a central yellow spot to pastels up to the top right and into pure ice at the tip. Exposure and lighting spot on, as is the focus, albeit through the ice. Another shot I really like. Hidden Beauty. A lot of thought has gone into this image and we are left wondering who is behind the flowers, as I guess was the author's intention. Everybody loves a story. And this image has one to tell. Who is she? Why is she hidden? Lit from the left, the light is a little over bright where it first hits the flowers, 
and has overlit the hand, which is a shame as your eyes are drawn to that point, something that is easily corrected in post-processing. Aside from these two points, the image overall is well lit, well exposed and pin sharp. Again, the plain background focuses the image on the main subject and that essential key line holds it all in. Great shot. Hydrangea and web. A vignette round the whole image pulls our eyes into the main subject, which is a vibrant pinky red, sharp and well exposed. The real beauty in this shot is the cobwebs and the dew which add a real sparkle. Take an early morning at a guess, as the webs are crisp and still intact. Unobtrusive background adds to the overall effect, but there is a bright leaf right hand side in the middle that takes your eye when you spot it, easily toned down or removed. In Beijing, size matters. Well, it's certainly big and not something easily moved centrally placed in the frame, but if you could have gone a few steps to the right, you may have hidden the lighting post behind the giant pot. The other two being further back are not so intrusive. The colours are a bit oversaturated and there are a few dust spots that need attention, but you can't disagree it has impact. Rapeseed flowers. Nice to see the author resisted the temptation to have exact half and half of sky and foreground. I might have been tempted to have two thirds rapeseed and one third sky just for the colour. However, as the author has presented it, it's a very pleasing image. Colourful, well exposed and sharp, with an interesting sky to boot, as well as blues and yellows working so well together. Rose, Alan Titchmarsh. The individual elements in this image are all wonderfully captured and presented. The freshness of the rose and the texture of the old bottle complement each other. The lighting is well handled and the background is graduated and unobtrusive. But for me, I feel the proportions of the rose to the bottle just does not look right, which is a pity as everything else works. Sempervivum. Succulents like this Sempervivum lend themselves to a monochrome rendition and the author has exploited this. Good detail in the centre with a slight vignette and softening towards the edges. We see a lot of images in this sort of frame, and some work and some don't. On the whole, I think on this occasion, it suits the images. Three Amigos. Some good colour combinations in this image of, and this is where I show my very limited horticultural knowledge, three passion flower blooms in a vase. I like the way the background picks up the colours of the blooms on one hand, but on the other hand is competing too much for our attention. The image is well exposed and evenly lit. I think the key line a bit heavy and possibly unnecessary as the background it colour itself supplies the separation. Through the glass. You have to let your eyes adjust to this image as it is a lot darker than the previous image. But when your eyes get attuned, you can see some lovely detail in the petals and the leaves, giving it a very impressionistic look and feel. The top centre petal and the top right petal could have benefited from a bit of dodging to lighten them just a bit to be of a similar shade as the bottom two. It always pays around to look at your image before releasing the shutter or submitting it after post-processing, as there is a light coloured line creeping in at the bottom. Trio. Nice top lighting on these three plant stroke blooms. I like the brightness fading down the stems to the bottom. Pin sharp with a plain complementary background. I perhaps would have liked a bit of separation on the right hand plant to match that of the left, and you may have been able to achieve this by just moving your point of view a bit. I've shortlisted six images this week as I thought each worthy of a second look. And these are Dahlia, Dandelions, Floral Shadow, Box Club Design, Geum Under Ice, Hidden Beauty. This was not an easy choice as each of these images warrant being in the final six and I have been going back and forth on all of them. But the one that draws my eye every time is Geum Under Ice. 
So that is the winning image for this round. Our winner this week then is Jill Beckett. Well done, Jill. Well, there we are. Well done to Jill and thanks to Brian for judging this week and also providing his own comments. And thank you, of course, to everyone that entered and to you for watching. Take care, everyone.